Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to ask, can everybody hear properly and see me properly? So if you message in the chat, just let me know if you can hear me and see me. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Everybody can hear. So before um, I start up with the with the webinar and we start doing our question and answer, I want to introduce myself first of all uh, for the ones that might not know who I am. So my name is Chrissy and I'm the North America head trainer for Refectasil. Work with the CBUN group in charge of education. So I do these webinars, classes, and help out with schools, distributors, anything that has to do with Refectasil education. So I welcome you all here today. I also wanted to give um, love out from CBUN Group. So CBUN Group, we want to give our love to everyone out there. We know it's a very difficult time that we're dealing right now with COVID-19. And we might personally be affected or we might have some people who might have been affected from it, possibly even have died from it. So we want to send out our love uh, to each and every one of you. Um, and in due time, you know, with our with the proper um, pr protocols that we follow from WHO and CDC, we can um, <clears throat> overcome this. Uh, pandemic and be able to go back to work um, strong okay so once again we send out our love to you and your family and stay safe okay so we can so how the webinar will work today is um, I'm going to be you're going to be throwing out questions to me and I'm going to be answering them so just um just to keep the pace going okay I don't miss any questions if you start seeing that there's a lot of questions being thrown thrown out Maybe everybody can take a little pause, a quick pause, so that I can reach up and then we can uh, throw. I'll do my best not to miss anybody's questions. So it, the questions can be on anything on the complete line. If you use the whole line, if it's on tints, on bleaching, on the lift, on the curl, um, troubleshooting questions. Have you been having issues with certain products from Refectasil? What can we do to help you with that, with those issues? Even sharing your love for Refectasil, letting us know what you love about Refectasil. Um, uh, that would be awesome. I, it's my time here to get to know you as as my fellow Broistas and Laishtas. Um, I wanna know uh, how you're doing with Refectasil, how Refectasil has been helping you with your, with your business as well, okay? So ask questions away now. We can start asking the questions and I can start answering any questions you have. Um, it, Oh, I think I see a cup question coming up from Justine. Okay, so this is a brow lamination question. Give me one second, Justine. Oops. I'm always, always doing this wrong. Give me one Six second. Seconds. But I can't, I'm highlighted. Which, which one am I? Hold on. Okay. Let's see if I got this. If I got this system right, do we need to reduce the time if we do? If we do want both both use Saran wrap. Okay, so this is for Justine. So the time does get reduced. Usually we say seven to eight minutes when you're when you're doing the lash perm solution, and then you put the Saran wrap off on. It will be only five minutes. You want to leave it on. That closure, that heat, that that um Saran wrap uh, will accelerate a little bit faster. But with my experience with the Refectasil Lash Lift um, kit that's now dual for the brows, I never had to use the um, Saran Wrap. For me, I found that if I work the brows with the brush um, and, and maybe during the solution take the brush and just brush in the, in the area I want the brows to go, I've had good success. So I avoided that step just in case the reason why I don't want to use a saran wrap uh, as well is because it provides that heat too. Uh, the product when it touches the, the skin can be a little bit sensitive. So we want to avoid it touching the skin with the, with the saran wrap pressing against the face might um, uh, irritate the skin with any, any product you use. It's meant to be the solution meant to be on the hair and the skin. So that's another reason. So I've had success without it, but if you are going to use a saran wrap, please cut the time down to about five minutes instead of seven or eight. Okay. Um, question from Kira. Hi, Kira. So is Refectasil the only, uh, the only brand of tint approved by Health Canada or is that what was before? I see a lot of distributors saying this, saying uh, what, where will we find this information at Canada.com? It would be in general tints because tints were, 
uh, banned up until I believe it was 2005 or three. I think it was 2005. So afterwards, the tents weren't allowed because even when I went to school, there wasn't much um, education on tenting because it wasn't allowed to be as a practice, right? Or tents weren't allowed in Canada. So it would be a general for, but with Refectisil, we took our program to Health Canada uh, from CBU, like CBUN, we took it to Health Canada and they approved our system of uh, education, approved our, um, you know, selling of Refectisil tents, just as long as those who are going to be using Refectisil are professionals and can go through our education so that they're using the product properly. So you would have to check under Health Canada under tents. I don't know if you've done that before, but I could find that um, uh, information for you, Kira just to get a, a better understanding. Um, Raquel Burroughs, can you go over the shelf life of the different products from opening? So it's gonna take forever to go through all the products from the shelf life, but I will make it easier for you. Behind each product, there is, and I'll choose a bigger one. Behind each product, there is a little image at the bottom. This is going to be really hard for you to see. Maybe not. There's a little image at the bottom with an open container, and it says 12, meaning once it's been opened, this expires after 12 months. So all our products have that. Same with the tint on the corner there. It has that image, and it's 12 months. For example, our saline solution or our tint remover, 12 months, I believe our saline solution is six months, or our oxidants are six months. Let me just check that for you. Nope, 12 months. So they're all pretty a year. So if you need to check all your solutions, all your products from Refectisil, um, that image on the back will help you. For the lash lift and curl, the um, solutions, it is two months. It's a shorter shelf life. So once you've opened them up, they can only stay active for two months. So what I suggest when you buy your kits uh, for your lift or your curl, and because now you're gonna be using either kit for brow lamination, um, just mark the date on the bottle you have you have opened because two months can come by pretty quickly. Um, uh, mark the date you've opened it so that you know in two months if it's reaching very close. So you don't wanna use something that's expired on a customer because you don't remember the date. And then, because a year to two months, pretty big gap, right? and then you forget the date and you do the service and then the um, service doesn't work out, okay? So I hope that helps you because if we go through the whole entire um, line, it, it will uh, take over all the other questions. But if, let me know, uh, Raquel, if that helped you to know by the images of the shelf life, okay? Let me know. Um, Jolene, what type of brushes do you recommend for getting the most precise application definition on a brow tip? So the question from Jolene is what type of brushes can you use to get precision when you're doing your, your brow? Did you mention lash? No, brow tint. So we used to have two, we have, um, we still have some, but we had the white brush, the little ones, with a gold cover, gold uh, color on them, or a silver. So the gold one had an angle to it. So I liked using that because it was an angle like a makeup artist would use to fill in the brows. So I would use the gold brushes uh, for the brows. And the silver brushes had a more blunt edge. And I would use that for the lashes so I can get very close to the waterline. But we do have new brushes now, which hopefully you can see them. Our new brushes uh, as well have this have a little bit of a more of an angle. If you can see this one, I don't know if you can tell. If I do it this way, it has a little bit more of an angle. So this is perfect to use for brows. And, or you know what, it becomes preference. I just like the angles to get precision for the brows. And then there's one that's more of a flatter, wider bristle uh, brush. And that one can be used for your lashes or as well for brows. This one's really good if you're doing it as well, the sensitive tint. So you can get precision with that crisp finish because the, the sensitive tint stain so it's really nice. You get width to apply the tint and good precision with this flat end. So the nice thing about these new brushes, very slick with the black and the rose gold, love it. And it matches with our either of our artist palettes because we have new artist palettes. And one's a ring, so you can wear it on your finger. Or the other one, you can put it on your, uh, for, uh, your top, 
your hand. <laughs> okay, so they work, they look nicely with the brushes, uh, very color coordinated, but as well, on the end of these brushes are these spoolies and they're rubber spoolies. So um, I know I'm gonna have people here from the States and from Canada, because we service North America, but uh, the regular regulations in the States might be differently, but here, because it's plastic, you can um, disinfect these, as opposed to if you were using the bristle ones, the ones like the disposable mascara ones that you buy in stock, you have to throw each one away, right? But even with this end, these brushes, they have to be disinfected as well, okay? But it makes, less having to dispose of a mascara one. So it's really nice, the rubber spoolie, okay? So those are our brushes. Hope that answered your question, Jolene. Cloud9 Salon, what do you recommend for getting brows that are coarse and wiry to lay in the direction you want them to lay when doing brow lamination? Okay, Ooh, one second. Oh. Just don't want to miss cloud. Okay, so what do you so what do you recommend for brows that are very coarse and wiry to lay in the direction uh, of what you where you want to lay when you're doing brow lamination? So usually because that's where the saran wrap comes into place. So once you brush them with the solution where you want them to lay, then you put the the saran wrap to hold them in that place. But I find once you put the brow lamination, uh, the, sorry the the uh, Refectosil, sorry, lash perm solution on. Once you put that onto the hairs, after a couple of minutes, because you're leaving it on there for about seven or eight minutes, halfway, about four minutes, I go back because the hair has softened right now. The bonds have broken. The keratin has kind of like loosened up. Um, the hair is a little bit more like spaghetti-like, right? So they're they're more workable. Go in there. This is what I do. I go in there and I brush them, and now I can fixate them to 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 the direction I want them to go and then if I have to put more solution I apply it on there dab it on there and leave it there because that's going to um, fixate them that way right when they break down the bonds but it's your neutralizer as well that's going to actually put it into place so once you've removed the solution number one you got to go back in there and brush them and redirect them to where you want them to go and then you're going to put the neutralizer on top if you put the neutralizer right away after you removed it and you haven't really styled where you want the hairs to go, then you're not gonna get that accuracy of it with the uh, neutralizer. The neutralizer is gonna form them to, to how you left them. So I hope that's making, making some sense. So go in between your first solution and brush them because they're becoming a little bit more uh, um, softer. You can brush them into the area you want them to, to lay. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if I answered your questions. Give me a little shout out in the text saying yes, thank you, so that I know. Um, Jolene, tips on getting the best application for those short lower lashes when tinting. So usually when we tint and it's worked, it works uh, well, you don't want to be tinting the lashes with the eyes open. So what we do is we take our protection papers or our silicone pads or like your black silicone pads, we put them right away underneath the bottom lashes. And then when you close your top eye and you're applying the, um, the tint, saturate that lash pretty well so that the tint that's on there is actually seeping through the lashes and going right to the bottom. And that has worked for us because we don't want to do any tinting with the eyes open. Um, it's getting it into the eye is not a, a, a nice thing. It doesn't feel nice. So we want to avoid anything from getting into the eye. So uh, by putting enough, I notice when I do classes, people don't put enough tint. It's very clean. It's very um, little. And it doesn't have time in that processing time to reach the bottom lashes. So if you put a good amount and make it a little bit more thicker, it will penetrate better right through the bottom lashes. So I hope that answers your question. Raquel, yes, thank you. Uh, Justine, let's answer your question. Oh, I just lost. Just give me one second, Justine. Can you use glue if wanted, needed? Example, for truly super stubborn hairs, 
which face truly the other direction. Uh, sorry, protocol for failed lift, even if processed for the full eight minutes. Post, this is a long message, sorry. Post lifting nourishing solution. Okay, let's break this question down, Justine. Uh, now, are we talking about, um, first we're talking about lashes or brows when it comes to your, to the glue? Because for the brow lamination, uh, they don't teach with the glue. I don't need to use the glue. I even done it on a client where the hairs just want to stick just one place and that's it. No matter what, even if you brush them with a brush, they just go back and they stick to that to that original area. So what I with the lamination, because it softens the hair, you can work with it. It's almost pliable. Like it, you can work with it. You can move it around. So I've had success with the uh, solution doing that without any glue. I know there's other systems out there that require the glue, uh, but with ours, we did it. There were with our system, Perfecto Cell, the manufacturer didn't require a glue to be used. So um, this year, question protocol for failed lift for the full eight minutes. Okay, if it, if the, the the lift failed when you finish your whole. Uh, lift treatment you got to go back and see troubleshoot what was the mistake that you did did you not choose the right pad maybe uh, was the pad a little bit too big you know uh, that that you still had room on that bump for for lashes but it didn't reach then you have to go to a smaller size uh, did you uh, use your your non-oily eye makeup remover and then your saline no matter what even if they come without any makeup that those two steps you got to do even with no, they came with no makeup. Any environmental factor can be um, in the way of the solutions to be able to penetrate into the hairs. So still do your non oily eye makeup remover and still do your saline solution. The other thing would be when you um, put the lashes up onto the pad, did you secure on top of the lashes with glue? Because what happens sometimes, because the glue dissolves pretty quickly, um, the the uh, fast because water soluble the lashes will pop up during that eight minutes and we don't want that so we teach to put the solution on the tips and on the center of the lashes to hold it down so uh, did you do that the other step is where did you place the solution it's it's different from our lift uh, from our curl kit the solution for the lift kit for the lift procedure has to be placed very close to the water line, which then my next question would be, did you pull those uh, eyes taut, very, very taut, where you could see that water line almost um, flipping over, okay? Uh, because then you can reach the solution very close to the water line without irritating your customer or touching the skin and their eyelid. Also, you have the full scope of all the lashes laying on that pad and you can saturate them. So, so that would be another thing. Now, where were you placing the solution? The solution has to start from the root of the, of the lashes to the center because we don't do the tips. We leave the tips of the lashes free because they're old growth. So we don't want to do anything to compromise them. And, you know, they could have been damaged from the sun or extension, lash extension glue. So we leave the tips free. Okay, so you have to question, did I put the application properly? So, so these are things that need to be um, uh, reviewed. The thing is, if you've done the service and you want to do it again the same seating, you can cut the times in half. So do four minutes and 2.5 and correct everything that you might have missed and then your results should happen. There's been a case, a case or two where even though I know I did it properly, uh, there was some some kind of factor that I might have missed, maybe or maybe they didn't tell me in the consent form, or maybe um, some type of medication they were they were taking was contraindicating with with the service, or if if they were pregnant, we can tell if they were pregnant at a certain trimester. Uh, but if they were pregnant, uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Period uh, on the second trimester. So so there will be sometimes some results that might not show as well did you check your expiring date we talked about expiring date did you check to see that the solution uh didn't pass in two months that's why it's crucial to write the 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 date okay so that's you still had more questions on here 
Um, post lifting nourishing solution. Gel doesn't seem like enough that it is very nourishing. I have read concerns over products with short processing time and that. Okay, so you've said that you've heard some reviews about um, processing times that are less, that they're uh, damaging. The thing you need to know about Refectisol, uh, Refectisol always keeps in mind the hair structure, the quality of the hair of your brows and lashes. They never want to compromise that. They're very big on that. So in the solutions, even though our times are eight and, eight and five minutes are pretty fast, the solutions are very gentle to your lashes. Um, it's got collagen, which is your natural protein substance uh, that's in your body that's naturally produced, but we've got that to help with uh, the production, the, the growth of hair. But then you also have your uh, cysteine, which are like amino acids, which help with the moisturizing of the hair, keeping it moist. So there are other treatments out there that might get kind of mixed with ours, uh, keratin treatments. They can work very well, can get really good results, but if you do not follow this timing that these keratin lash lifts say, you can actually irreverse the, the treatment in a sense that um, when you do hair care, when you do a hair straightening system with care, with the keratin system, if you go past the time that's recommended, you reverse the, the process and the hair actually dries out and snaps. So that's the main concern I've heard from a lot of people lining up at our trade show booths asking us, does your lash lift or lash curl damage my lashes? And I ask them, well, what's the product you use? And they tell me, I'm like, well, this is the reason why. And they're like, oh, okay. It's, I was educated on this by a hairstylist, so several hairstylists that told me the reason why keratin does this. So be careful. Know the system while they're going to use. Know the ingredients while they're going to use. Research them if you have to. Ask the manufacturer or ask like the, the mass distributor um, and follow the, the, the instructions. That's I, For our for effect of cell, it will not damage your lashes. The other thing you need to be careful is if somebody came to you into your chair and had compromised lashes to begin with, for example, they were very overly processed. They, they, the um, lash extensions that they've done on them have damaged their lashes. First of all, I would not even do a treatment on them. I would say, here you go, uh, buy this styling gel, or we have another one called uh, uh, Care Balm, uh, which has castor oil in it. Take it home, use it for the next three to four weeks, and then I will book your appointment. Because if you were to go do the service on somebody that had compromised lashes, you will, um, uh, they will have, the, the lashes won't be able to sustain the treatment of the Refectisil, and they will have an, a negative effect, not because of the product, but because the lashes were in good condition. So you still, you didn't lose them as a customer. You didn't lose a sale because you sent them with a home care pack, home care treatment, uh, but they're, and they're gonna come back in four weeks to rebook their um, their service. So being honest with your customer, it is it's a smart thing to do because if they were to go home and say, and then their lashes broke or dried, they're gonna, freak out and social media is such an easy way to spread news and they can go give a bad review and there goes your credentials or goes your salon or you know what I mean it's just so so just be very careful okay I'm gonna have to move on to other questions too um but I hope I answered this uh with I answered your questions just Justine uh cloud nine awesome thank you that means I answered your question awesome uh, Karen, tinting light blonde brows, recommendations so they don't look fake. Tinting light blonde, blonde brows. Okay, so you have light uh, brows, light blonde brows, and you want to tint them so they don't look too dramatic, so they don't look like almost that they've been tinted. Uh, we have our beautiful light brown color, which if you use it on, your, on its own, it will give amazing results for those uh, lighter uh, blonde clientele. But sometimes if the blonde that the customer has in their hair as well, is a, even their brows is a cooler blonde, I always mix it with the graphite, okay? So I mix them, mix, sorry, mix them equal parts. And then it's your timing that's gonna be crucial. Uh, you know, if somebody wants some intensity, they're like, I want the intense, intense brows. I'm gonna go 10 to 15 minutes on their brows. But for somebody who says, says I just want a very natural, subtle look, I'm gonna start 
at three minutes to five minutes monitoring those brows to see how much it took. It doesn't hurt after three minutes, nothing before that, because one to two minutes, it's trying to activate, it's trying to oxidize, it's trying to process, it's trying to get into the hair follicle. So don't start your timing at one or two minutes to remove, start at three minutes. And what I do is I'll remove one brow at three minutes off, show the customer, get them involved, right? Show the customer and see, is this the darkness you desired? Half of the time, the ones that kind of like freak out, if you know your timing properly, when I when they look at it, they're like, okay, you can go leave it a little bit longer, right? So I leave it another minute or two, nothing more than five minutes. So I hope that helps you with your light uh, blonde brows. Let me know, <laughs> okay? Thank you. Uh, Justine, brows, brows for the glue, please. So, oh, brows for the glue. So as I mentioned before, I probably answered it for the brows. No glue is needed for the brows. If you, uh, I don't, I can go back to the manufacturer and see if they tested it with the, with the glue. I, from the original, when I, when I, with the lash lift kit, because we've had it, when I tried the brow lamination, I never used glue. I said, let me use the less possible stuff I can and see if it's going to work. And it worked. And it avoids you from getting to buy extra glues because your because brows are more um, substance, like more hair to work on with. And it avoids buying saran wrap. So don't need to use glue. Okay. You can easily form those brows with the brush and the solutions. Okay, so I hope I answered that question too. Uh, uh, Brie, how can you get those very coarse gray white brow hairs to grab onto the tint? And any removal ways to prevent that little bit of tint irritating the client's eyes, especially for clients that have watery eyes? Okay, so first question, how can we tint those uh, bristly coarse white hairs? Beautiful product we have is our, our Refective Cell Blonde Brow, which is a bleaching. So you can, and it's the safest method to bleach on the hairs on your face and your brows. Do not use straight salon ones. Uh, this is the safest method with the prop appropriate 3% 10 volume peroxide, nothing higher than that. Okay, please. Uh, we don't want to um, have people walking in with no brows. Okay, so. Um, this is what's gonna to help to pre-soften those gray hairs. You're gonna mix about two centimeters of this to 23 to 25 drops of your Refectosil Oxidant Cream. Not your liquid, but your Oxidant, okay? It needs the cream only, okay? And you're gonna take your blonde brow and you're gonna mix it, it's gonna look very Clumpy at first, don't worry. Bleaching paste is supposed to be like that. Uh, work it for about a minute until it becomes a nice, very grainy paste, granular paste. And then it, you apply it onto the onto the brows. Make sure you saturate them properly, back and forth, and you know, like get these nice big white caterpillars. You can use protection cream around the brow. Uh, just make sure it doesn't get into the bleaching paste because it might inactivate it. But because we do see that because the bleaching paste, it could lighten the skin as well. So you don't want that for your customers. So just um, put protection cream around the 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 brow um, as well. Um, Let's see, so we've got it on there. Uh, leave it only for three to five minutes pre-softening. Pre so the higher you'll go up to five minutes is if the, if the gray is extremely coarse and bristly. If it's a mild case, I would always just three minutes, but three to five minutes is your pre-softening, okay? And then if you're gonna tint afterwards, one minute, it grasps the, the color because the follicle's open, it's been stripped as well, uh, quickly, okay? So monitor that tinting so it's not too dark for your customer. So I hope that answered your question question Brie but then you also asked for removal sorry removal of this solution so um, a lot of people that come visit our booths if they've just graduated or what they learned from school is they rinse they do a cleansing rinse with the bleach with the um, tint still with residues of the tint still on the eyes right uh, what we teach from Refectisil is dry removal first you know you're gonna have to use several q-tips but you're going to remove remove the excessive amount of tint first don't rush through the removal time uh, because this is where if you slip, if you're, you know, you get into the corner of the eye, you use to irritate them. But usually when you do with dry, it's helped a lot of people not to have irritation. Then once your Q-tip starts to look nice and almost white, um, you can take a cotton pad, do not drench it with water, squeeze out the excessive water, and then place it on top of the eye and maybe dab 
on the lashes just to make any other tip go onto the cotton pad. And then I just grab the pad that I have that's underneath the eye with the wet cotton pad and I roll them down and out. And that usually helps. Now, if the customer has like a droopy eye, you just gotta be very careful that you get in the inner corner and the outer corner of the eye any solution before they open up their eye because that's where they'll feel irritation, okay? Um, you're welcome, Justine. I'm glad I was able to answer that. Crystal, can you explain the difference between the lash lift and the lash curl kits or process? So the good thing is that we're gonna have a webinar on April 17th on, which is the following week, on the lash lift. If you can, it's free. If you can sit it in that one, you can watch and see the different procedures. But basically the lift, lift as it says lifts, lifts the lashes straight up which the curl brings it in rounded. So if somebody was looking for a shape that's rounded into C curl, they would want the curl. If they were wanting the, um, the lift, so the lashes look like they have lash extensions, nice and high and looking longer, then they would use the lift. Uh, more information will be provided at this webinar. Unfortunately, to go through the processing and everything like that, it's gonna um, take time from other questions, but please, if you can register for uh, that webinar, it's free, it's gonna help you gain the knowledge you need for these kits, please register, okay? Uh, Karen, you're very welcome. Kira, when I, when I did with the glue, um, Kira, uh, Kira, just remind me again, um, I might have to go upstairs to your messages. I mean, sorry, upstairs, go higher. Let me just, give me one minute just to see what we said last, Kira. Okay. So Kira, we're talking about the Health Canada, right? Or I think you might be answering uh, somebody else's question. <laughs> I think you might be just chatting in there. I, I think you said when I did with the glue, it looks so overdone. It looks ridiculous and no one's eyebrows go straight up. Yeah, that's kind of true. You don't want to make them look extremely straight up the brows when you're doing a brow. Was it brows or lashes? Yeah, brows. Brows. You don't want them with the brow lamination to be shooting straight up because it can might look a little bit unrealistic and not natural. So the glue exactly can do that because you're putting the glue and it's holding into that same position. You can't go back in there and brush them nicely to form them almost to a nice flowy, feathery, smooth flow. You can't do that with the glue on there. So, so I find you have more control without the glue to give either a fluffy look, a soapy look, a boy type of look. Like there's diff there's three different types of variety of like uh, brows you can achieve with the with the webinar, which we'll explain in our in our brow webinar, or you can watch the one that we posted up on our reflectusalleducation.com. But make Kira makes a good point with the glue. Okay. Um, Shama Shama for the black black brow tint light tint how it works. So I'm just trying to understand your question, Shama. For the black brow light tint, there's only one black color, which is our natural black, our pure black. Okay. So if you're trying to find out um, how to make it a little bit lighter or softer, you can put the graphite in there, or if you wanted to warm it down. You can put a little bit of the of the um, reds, or you can also cool down the like a not cool down tone down the black if it's too too much for the brows with the browns. I usually will mix like either my natural brown or my light brown with the black. So I hope that's what you were asking. And you're going to mix your two centimeters with your 15 drops of oxygen cream or 10 drops of oxygen liquid. So I hope I answered your question, Shama. Alexis, troubles getting intense lash color, especially with black, even on lighter natural lashes. How to not have lashes lifting during process for lifts is okay to apply more glue. Okay, so usually for the lashes, we don't really have that issue with intensity, excuse me, <coughs> especially with um, lighter lashes. Usually you can see that intensity right away, but what you can do is, have you, instead of using just the blue black on its own, if that's the color you're using, um, who am I speaking to again? 
Alexis, um, instead of using just the blue black, have you tried mixing the black and the blue black and leaving it on for 15 minutes? Let me know, okay? Um, Kimber, you keep, oh, sorry, I want to ask the processing, uh, sorry. How to not have lashes lift during the process for the for the lifts. We mentioned this at the beginning, but yes, apply more glue. Just dab it onto the tip and the center of the lashes. That's it. Uh, just don't roll it. Just dab it. Once you've done rolling the lashes onto the silicone pad, just take this the glue and dab it on the center and the tip. And then you wait it to dry 10 seconds, and then you can apply the solution. This this has helped the the lashes not to pop off. If you've had one or two lashes pop off, all you gotta do is after you remove this step number one, you just go back and you uh, glue down those couple of lashes. So I hope I answered the second part of your question. Yes, the hair shaft, sorry about that, Kimber, the hair shaft. It does, it, it penetrates into the hair shaft, not the skin. But that's a, the that's a reason that we say don't put it on the skin. It's not meant for the skin. It's meant for the hair to penetrate inside because on the skin is where you're going to get reactions from people who could be allergic or, or sensitivities because uh, it's not meant for the skin when you mix it with the oxidant. So, yes, hair, follow, uh, sorry, hair shaft, okay? Um, Crystal, perfect, thank you. I am familiar with lifts, but think the curl would be great for specific clients. It's true, the, the curl is good for specific clients. I find even for myself, um, my lashes are um, pretty long, um, and I don't really want to do a lift where they look extremely lifted really close to my brows. I wanna keep them a little bit natural with darkness, uh, but I like to use the curl to add that nice rounded definition because they're already long. So I want to add that curl. Male clientele. Male clientele does not really need a lash lift to push their lashes really high. They like that little bit of definition of a shape to give alertness to their eyes. Uh, if, if, if they look a little bit tired or it gives refreshment to the eye area. Okay. So I found uh, at the trade show lately when we had them, now we have a pause. I found a lot of people lining up or male clientele that want to try the, the, uh, uh, curl and as well beer tinting so yeah yeah curls good for specific uh, clientele also for people who are allergic to the lift because the glue goes on a lot of portion of your skin on your lid some people can have reactions and they're like well now I can't do a treatment treatment on my lashes to give them some kind of shape well yes we can move you over now to the curl okay um, Kira, yes, yes. So I, 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 I replied properly, right? Because you were, you were mentioning about the glue. It doesn't give a realistic look to the brows. Yeah. So I agree with you. <laughs> uh, Justine, brows. How do you prevent product removal when brushing through the brows during processing? Um, if you, so the question for Justine is, how do you prevent product removal? Uh, usually with the brushes that I use or disposable mascara on, I don't really have a lot of it coming out because I'm not I'm not pressuring to brush the brows. I'm just doing these light little strokes. So I don't really have product removing. But if I feel that in some areas the tint became subsided a little bit, I still have some remaining in my bowl. So I'm gonna make use of it. And usually this is what I do. I always tend to leave a little bit in my bowl because I go back like a painting. You go back and you like to go fill the little parts that hmm needs a little work there hmm needs a little work there so i leave um some tint left over in my in my bowl uh so that i can go back so for, for your case leave a little bit and if you feel like when you're brushing to go back to the to the brows and you feel like a lot of product came off because maybe you're using a q-tip or i'm not quite sure what you're using uh you still have some left you can go back and apply it in the areas that feel like the the solution left I hope that's a good solution uh, for you. Um, 
do you recommend for another nourishing solution if brow hairs feel very dry? Are you talking about um, uh, an aftercare product? Our two aftercare products are beautiful. I use them daily, just uh, even if I don't do any of these processing processing services on my brows or lashes, I use them daily. First of all, the styling gel, I don't have the, the care bomb with me, but the styling gel, it hydrates, it protects, and it seals. So, so I can use this every day on my brows or lashes to give them that gloss, that glisten, that luster. Um, and then my brows, because I'm getting older, they get a little bit more coarser and unruly, uh, which now the brow lamination helps. But I don't want to keep on doing brow lamination often, often, often. Um, I can use this in between and and give them that nice, slick, soft look so that if I want to fill in my brows, or tip my brows or whichever, I get a nice smooth application. So our styling gel is amazing for that and also good to sell to your clients as an aftercare, but also to help prolong their treatment. If there's customers out there that their um, their um, service, their tending service doesn't last that long, especially for the brows, right? And they're more exposed, they, they get robbed with, uh, with exfoliants and this and that or they're, they sweat a lot, or during the summertime, the heat makes them not last longer, they could use this every day to seal in the, the treatment, okay? So it's very good that you as a professional use this after any brow or lash service you've done for Refectisil, and then send them home with one, or sell one to them to use it every day at home. The other thing is a care balm. So I don't know if everybody's seen the care balm. The care balm has a bunch of rich plant um, nutrients, which is some oils and castor oil, which helps to nourish the hair, bring it back to vitality and back to its original state. And it's like a mask. You know, you get a, this is more of an oil for your hair, the selling gel, but the castor oil is more like a mask for your hair. So think of it that way. So uh, the castor oil, the care balm, you use it at nighttime. This is your day, day treatment. The castor oil, the care balm is for nighttime. And I put it on and I go to sleep. I put it on both my brows and my lashes and I get good hydration, good, uh, um, uh, repair, regenerate, repair to my to my brows and my lashes. So I hope that answers your questions for our aftercare products. Uh, yes, Kira. So we're in agreement, right? We I answered the right the right thing. Okay, Kira, your method was so much better. Uh, you mean like from the webinar, right? When you watched it? Well, that was a video from them, but. From the beginning, I never used glue. Uh, sorry, it was from GW, from the manufacturer. But from the beginning, I never used glue and I never used um, saran wrap. And the only thing I say a little bit differently than the than the video we saw is I like to go back in and brush the brows. I like to do that and I still have effect. Like I it didn't compromise my results. Um, I do it carefully, nicely because I feel like going back in to brush them a little bit, I can, if any hair that kind of has misdirected, I can get it back to its position. So I'm happy that that helped you too, Kira. Um, Karen, if a client has overly thin brows from too much waxing plucking, will the brow lift help? So depending on what type of overly thinning brows, it's gonna help thinning brows, but if the brows have become non-existent, it will be very hard because you will still have uh, gaps if they're at that level. But uh, for myself, you don't can't tell right now, but as I'm getting older, somehow maybe I'm lacking some nutrients in my body, my brows are getting very thin and, and, and I'm losing a lot of brow hair. So with the brow lamination, which was again, I'm gonna post some before and after pictures of my brows because for me, I was very like shocked. I was like, whoa, um, this was uh, made me so happy that I don't have to go use any other harsh treatments like a microblading, like they're more, it's more, inv it's more um, invasive. And I didn't want to do something like that. So my brows are thinning, not to a point where they've disappeared. So yes, the, the brow lamination worked on thinning brows, but as soon as they're very gapped, very like there's a lot missing, it might not, not um, be as effective, the look. Um, I'm sure if you can try, this is a suggestion, I haven't tried it yet. Um, I tried it on my sister who has much thinner brows than me and it looked amazing. But uh, you can try it on somebody that has compromised brows, I'm going to put it that way, and try and um, do the service and maybe tint afterwards with the sensitive, where there might be a little bit more staining. Try and see how that works. Uh, but otherwise, um, it does work on thinning brows, but not ones that are like almost non-existing. Okay. 
Uh, I hope that answered your question. Uh, so leave blue black color on lashes for 15 minutes. Is this if only tinting or when tinting after a lift? No, if you're tinting lashes, so that we're going back to Julia's question about the blue black because she was saying that um, uh, she didn't get that intense uh, tinting on the lashes. So uh, leave it 15 minutes if you're not doing a lift or uh, or a curl. If you're doing a lift and a curl, I would say five minutes. You're technically supposed to be only doing it three minutes after a lift and a curl, but if their lashes are very thick, luscious, I can go up to five minutes. But the the fall the um, hair shop, the, the follicle, the hair has been opened, so it's going to take the color faster, and you don't want to overly excuse me process. But you can I go to five minutes if it's been tinted, I mean, lifted or curled, okay? Otherwise, if it's just straight lash lash uh, tinting, go 15 minutes with the blue and the black, half and half. Um, okay, you're welcome, um, Alexis. I think I might have got people mixed up with the question because I got another blue-black. Yes, try adding the blue-black and black together. Um, and um, the clarifying of the glue, glad that helped as well. I'm glad it makes sense. Thank you, Alexis. Um, Raquel, what sanitizers do you use for hands and brushes? Gloves can get in the way. So I know a lot of people, they do practice, even before this whole pandemic happened, a lot of people, because they're touching the face, do wear gloves when they're performing the tinting services or the lift services. A hand sanitizer should have a 60% uh, alcohol base in it. Um, try not to have things that are perfumed in it because they won't be as effective. So just keep it straight alcohol, uh, hands, 60% alcohol hand sanitizer. Um, and then to sanitize your brushes, there are, there are products out there that are for, um, sanitizing, but if you're in Canada and you wanted to use, um, a preempt, you can use the preempt RTU wipes or the liquid to clean your brushes. So I'm not quite sure if you're from Canada or if you're from the US. The US has different regulations and preempt is not in the US. So um, you gotta find out uh, what is out there for um, uh, disinfecting your brushes or sanitizing your brushes, okay? Um, Karen, thank you for the tip, you're very welcome. Julia, thank you for clarifying, you're very welcome. Um, we have about another five minutes, so uh, because I'm going to have to show a slide at the end. So if you have two more minutes of questions, so two more minutes of questions, and then after that, we're going to go through a uh, little slide just to show um, how you can win a mystery prize. Okay, perfect. So uh, can you use UV to sanitize brushes? Those UV sterilizers are not meant to you know, disinfect or sterilize. They're meant to store and keep it from getting cross-contaminated. So I would, uh, because remember to disinfect is two steps. You gotta clean with soap and water first and then you got to apply the disinfectant. So um, I would use that as, as a storing unit, right? Um, any other questions? I see Lisa. I see Lisa asking a question, and then I just hit the arrow for that one too. Tasha, just hit the arrow, right? To go to the next slide. Oh, last one of the questions, but how do I go to the slide? Oh, I click on it. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So, um, Lisa, no question. Just want to say thank you for this info. Oh, you're very welcome, Lisa. I appreciate, uh, and you're welcome, Karen. I appreciate everybody's feedback on this because then it helps me to know that I was able to present the information properly to you guys um, and that I was able to answer your questions because the last thing I want for you is to leave this webinar and maybe be more confused or, or wait, did I get my answer question? Did I get my question answered? So, so I'm happy I was able to help everyone. So this, I'm gonna go now to the slide that I have right here. In the meantime, if you have to ask one, one more question, go ahead, but I'm gonna go through the slide. Um, it's if you want to win a mystery prize. So first step, follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. And we have it on there, Perfect Assault North America, okay? Uh, second step upload a picture of yourself 
a, a, a Refectosol service or a Refectosol product or with you with a Refectosol product, whichever that, that showcases Refectosol or talks about Refectosol, and let us know what you love about Refectosol. Uh, post it on your Instagram and don't forget to tag us. Okay, because then we'll be able to look at these and we'll direct message the winner. But it's also a nice way for us to see uh, what you like about Refectosil and to see happy or what says another just okay. So uh, make sure to do this. Um, I'm going to leave it on for another second. Uh, we do have many more webinars happening on Refectosil. So please check our refectosileducation.com website for more uh, webinars. We do have one coming up on the 17th on Lash Styling, Lift and Curl. And we do have other brands. So if you're in Canada, we do have Preempt. So I do do webinars on infection control, but sadly it's only for the Canadian side. Um, uh, the product is not sold in, in the US. So the regulations can be different even if you did attend it might not comply with FDA. So, so, so unfortunately at the moment, we don't have anything going for the US. But um, we also have a waxing brand, an amazing waxing brand called Quran Lab with, like once you've tried this product, this uh, waxing brand, you won't be going back to any other waxes, trust me. Uh, such a versatile wax doesn't get brittle, doesn't break on you. And we do have amazing webinars happening, educational, free. All these webinars are free, able free. It's good for your time now to continue your education. We have the time now that we're at home uh, to be able to continue our education. So if you're interested in waxing, even they have an amazing brow sculpting gel. And she'll be holding a bunch of webinars. Holly, Holly Hayes is the uh, Quran Lab head trainer. And if you visit Quran Lab underscore North America, uh, follow on Instagram, Quran Lab underscore North America. And then you could also go to QuranLab.com. But under the Instagram page, you can click the link in her in the bio and you'll see all the webinars on there and you can register. So uh, trust me, you'll love this wax even for using it along with your Refectosil brow styling, brow shaping, okay? So the last page I'm gonna just, show, I'm gonna show right here is to say thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Um, yep, Quran Lab. So the slide here that I have is just to let you know our Facebook page, if you can like it, leave us some reviews. We'd love to see and hear your reviews on Refectosil. So please um, leave some reviews on our Facebook, okay? Um, also visit our refectosileducation.com website. You'll be able to access a lot of material there uh, to watch a lot of webinars, past webinars and then also to see the new ones we post up there and to see when the next educational webinars free webinars are and last if you need to email me for assistance on how to use Refectosil just troubleshooting questions um, I you can find me at refectosil.education at cvungroup.com so maybe if you take a picture of this slide or if you're writing it down and then as I mentioned our next webinar is Friday April 17th so check for all three brands the Refectosil on that and preempt check for free educational videos and i'm so glad everybody was able to attend today and um oh thank you raquel i enjoyed your webinars i did a class last year in charlottetown oh very very nice very i'm glad you you enjoy it you enjoyed our uh, or what's the crawl lab i can't i don't know it might have been crawl lab too but um thank you so much for everybody's feedback and i appreciate it i hope i get to not see everybody, but I hope I get to hear everybody again in the following webinars I'll have. And don't forget that mystery prize, okay? So I appreciate everybody. Thank you and stay safe, okay? Yeah.